Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Mark here with Miramar College for spinal motion restriction and immobilization. We're gonna go over the spinal mobilization for the supine patient skill and go over some of the, the terminology of what is spinal motion restriction. So we're gonna go over everything on this sheet. Uh, then we're gonna go through the spinal mobilization skill sheet and then talk about some county specific things with San Diego. So let's get started here. We're going to start this skill obviously with standard precautions, scene safety, but after that you direct a partner to hold manual inline stabilization. So holding and maintaining manual, manual inline stabilization is crucial to minimizing excessive movement that may cause further injury. So this person right here, he's holding manual inline stabilization on this patient. Notice how he's keeping the nose over the navel and the spine is relatively straight. So pulse motor sensory functions in all four extremities. Now I just want to emphasize, you're going to make a partner do this and you are going to personally do a PMS check on the patient for the skill test. So these PMS functions should be checked in an organized manner. Start with the upper extremities and then go down to the lower extremities. That should say upper. So pulse upper, we'll check for the presence of bilateral radial pulses. We just want to make sure that they're there. For motor function, we ask the patient to fan their fingers out and don't let me push them together. If they can resist you pushing their fingers together, they have good motor function. And sensory, we're going to test for two things. We're gonna test for pain, have the patient close their eyes, pinch the back of their hand. Where does it hurt? Repeat on the other side for their upper extremities and then do light touch. So keep their eyes closed, lightly touch one finger and ask, do you feel me touching your finger? And then repeat for the other side. Now we go down to lower extremities. For lower extremity pulses, we can check either bilateral uh, dorsal pedal pulses or posterior tibial pulses. Those are your kind of two options there. And we'll go over more of the locations uh, when we get back in the lab. But just be aware, these are the two we're going to be choosing from. For motor, for the lower extremities, you're going to instruct them to push down against my hands with your feet so you place your hands underneath their feet and pull up against my hands with your feet, placing your hands on top of their feet. And then we're gonna test the same sensory pathway. So we're gonna test for pain, have them close their eyes, pinch their foot and ask, where does it hurt? Repeat for the other side, test for light touch, have them with their eyes closed, lightly touch a toe and ask, do you feel me touching your toe? Repeat for all extreme, repeat for the other side. So those are your PMS checks, upper and lower. And now we apply a cervical collar. So you wanna make sure that a cervical collar is measured properly when you're putting it onto your patients uh, and it's indicated for use in patients with suspected spinal injuries. So it, it's, um, it's restrictive, but it's not going to stop somebody from moving their head if they really, really wanna move their head. So it's simply a reminder to, to the patient to keep their head in a neutral inline position. And the sizing procedures, they vary by manufacturer. So I'm not gonna go into the sizing details specifically for this model or any of the other models um, just because it's gonna vary. And when we come back into the lab, we can go over it again in more detail and it makes more sense because you have it right there. Just be aware of the fact that with cervical collars, if they're not sized appropriately, they do more damage than they do good. So it's very imperative that you size them appropriately. So. Once you get the collar onto the patient, you start organizing what's called a log roll. These folks right here, these are this, this is a log roll. And the person at the head starts the count, so they do one, two, three, and then these people pull so that the patient rolls towards them. At that point, another provider will bring in a backboard. That backboard will be slid in at a 45 degree angle, and with a scooping motion, you guys will coordinate movement of the patient onto the backboard. Make sure you guys watch the video uh, of Jesse demonstrating the skill and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But just be aware that you have to have clear communications with the team and honestly, it's all about maintaining control and, and leading your team through the environment. So summary, spinal motion, and this is kind of what it looks like at the end. So you pad the voids down here and then you strap them in. 
you secure their hands. We'll talk about that. Spinal motion restriction is constantly evolving. What I mean by that is some, some schools of thought have departed from the old backboard and we're just going supine on the gurney with a collar. So it really just depends um, on what your agency's protocols are. For the city of San Diego and the whole county of San Diego, I'll show you what we use here in just a second. Ensure voids are properly padded. So as you can see right here, ensure straps are tight enough to restrict movement, but not so tight that the patient can't breathe. And always reassess pulse, motor, and sensory functions. So let's take a look at just the skill sheet so we can run through it verbally. So standard precautions, scene safety. I'm gonna have a partner hold and maintain manual inline stabilization. Don't let go until I tell you to. And then I'm going to assess PMS in the upper and lower extremities. I'm going to appropriately size and apply a C collar while that person is maintaining that, excuse me, maintaining actual stabilization. I'm going to organize a log roll where we position the backboard appropriately. So the bottom of the board should be at the patient's knees roughly. We're going to log roll them. Person comes in with the backboard at a 45 degree angle. We'll initiate a log roll onto the backboard, padding any voids as necessary. And we're going to start strapping them in from the torso down. So we're going to put the two straps across the chest, make sure those are secure, put the strap across the hip, the two across the legs, making sure we pad the voids in the legs there. And then we're going to secure the patient's head to the device using the headbed stay blocks. And then we're going to tie their arms together, reassess PMS, and that's the end of the skill. So go ahead and watch the video on that. If you guys still have any questions, um, I'm gonna put that right here in this Canvas module. So it's gonna be real easy for you guys to watch the video. For the County of San Diego, we have what's called NSAIDs, and it's a decision algorithm for spinal motion restriction. The County of San Diego defines spinal motion restriction as the following. The use of an appropriately sized cervical collar on a stretcher while limiting the movement of the spine and maintaining neutral inline position. Backboard should be limited to extrication whenever possible. Inline stabilization should be maintained with the patient supine and neutral on the gurney during transport. And if a patient is not able to tolerate the supine position during transport document the reason and communicate it to receiving hospital staff. So what is NSAIDs? So neurologic exam, are there any abnormal sensory or motor findings? Weakness, numbness, or complaints? Look for focal deficits such as tingling, reduced strength, numbness in an extremity. 65, are they greater than or equal to 65 years of age? Are they altered? Are they not oriented to person, place, time, situation? Is there a language barrier? Is the patient cooperative? Are they intoxicated by drugs or alcohol? Distracting injury. Are there any other injuries which are capable of producing significant pain, maybe taking away from their spinal cord injury? And on the spine exam, does the patient complain of neck or back pain? Look for point tenderness, tenderness in any spinal process or spinal process tenderness. So as you can see, this just uh, breaks it down a little more simply. Neuro complaint, yes. Spinal motion restriction, no. 65 years and older, yes. Spinal motion restriction, it just keeps going like that. So this is actually in your protocol book. It's S104 attachment. It's in the uh, skills section of the book. And let's see what else we got. So special considerations, pre-hospital provider assessment will determine what method is needed. Every patient with trauma must receive an assessment. If an assessment component is positive, the patient requires spinal motion restriction. And again, that's supine on the gurney with a collar. Patients with severe kyphosis or other anatomical medical conditions may be stabilized using a combination of pillow, blankets, and other devices. For those special patient populations, you have to get creative. Spinal motion restriction should be accomplished using the most appropriate tool for the specific circumstances may include, but not limited to, vacuum splints, pneumatic splints, cervical collars, soft collar straps, tape, as well as soft materials such as pillows and blankets to minimize movement, compression, or distraction of the spine. Patients with acute or chronic difficulty breathing, we're going to use spinal motion restriction with caution in patients exhibiting dyspnea, that's difficulty breathing and place the patient best suited to protect the airway. So if you have somebody who's having difficulty breathing, you might have to modify the position, put them in semi-fowlers. 
But that's a basic overview of spinal mobilization and spinal motion restriction. So spinal mobilization for the supine patient, that is a testable skill. If you guys have any questions, feel free to message me on Canvas or leave a comment down below. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye.